Random access memory, or better known as RAM, is what everybody blames for their KD rate not being as high as they want it to be. Bro, just wait till I upgrade my RAM, I swear I'll get better. <laughs> well, that might not be exactly what RAM is known for, but it is a pretty well-known fact that RAM has a massive impact on the performance that you're gonna get in game. See, whether you're trying to open as many Chrome tabs as you possibly can, are trying to edit video or do office work, or you're just the casual gamer who wants to flex on your console friends with your ultra high FPS, you know that RAM is what gets you those higher numbers of Chrome tabs, efficiency and work, or FPS. Well, that made me curious and I wanted to test a couple things. First off, how big of a difference does RAM actually make in game? And second off, what happens if you remove RAM from a computer while it's running? Well, watch to the end to see what happens with that second one. And for the first one, well, let's jump right in. Today, we're putting four different RAM configurations head to head, or rather head to head to head to head. We are gonna be testing four, eight, 16, and 32 gigabytes of RAM. Now, just to make everything fair, we are going to turn SMP off for the testing because our four gig stick is pretty different from the eight gig sticks that we'll be testing for the rest of this video. For the PC that we're using for testing, we're using a pretty typical entry-level gaming rig. This one's got an XFX, RX 580 and a Ryzen 5 2600. The RAM, as you might guess, is going to vary from test to test. Let's start off our game testing with Fortnite, because all the Rizzlers know it's the most skibbity game in Ohio. Gosh, I felt so stupid saying that. I have to appeal to a younger audience. Why, YouTube? Why? So at 1080p on performance mode, our PC managed to hit 109 FPS on average, peaking out at 143 and bottoming out at 73 FPS. Our 1% and 0.1% lows were at a brutal 12 and 7% a piece. The gameplay was stuttery and we saw some really weird artifacting in the sky and it, it really was not an enjoyable gaming experience. Was it playable? Sure, if you can handle the stutters and the seizures, but I wouldn't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole. Unfortunately, upgrading from four to eight gigabytes did not fix the weird artifacting that we saw in the sky. It was still very much there, but we did see a significant performance boost. Good evening, everybody. I'm Reagan Ann McDonald, reporting to you live from Ryan's office, though it needs a woman's touch, I will admit. In a surprising turn of events, it seems that local hospitals report a dramatic drop in seizure cases as a small-time tech YouTuber upgraded his RAM from 4 gigabytes to 8 gigabytes, whatever the heck that means. This is believed to be due to Fortnite gameplay becoming less stuttery and flashy. My goodness, what is my grandson up to in Fortnite? All right, so our average FPS jump to 145, giving us a 33% uplift. I'm reading the teleprompter, by the way. I don't know what these numbers mean. The max FPS hit 170, and the lowest was 100. The 1% and the 0.1% lows were 23 and 14 FPS, almost double what we got with four gigabytes. So eight gigabytes is clearly better than four gigabytes, but what about 16 gigabytes? You gotta tell me, cause I don't know. Well, as far as my testing shows, absolutely. Our average FPS went from 145 to 189, giving us about a 30% uptick in performance, which is pretty freaking significant. Especially if you're using a high refresh rate monitor, you are definitely going to notice this change. As far as our maxes go, we did see a significant improvement hitting as high as 225 FPS. And while there was a big improvement there, we actually took a step back with our minimum FPS, losing only four FPS, although that was within the margin of error. We ended up getting 96 FPS for those wanting to know the actual number, so there you go. As far as our 1% and 0.1% lows go, they were kind of ruined by a big stutter mid game as we got two FPS on both of them, which isn't exactly what we would have wanted to see. Although it is okay because we did see a much more playable gaming experience with 16 than with eight. Although if you want to think about it mathematically, the numbers don't lie. So really eight gigs is better than four by a lot. Anyways, on to the 32 gig test. So after switching to 32 gigs, the gains that we saw were not nearly as dramatic as between four and eight, and then between eight and 16. Our average FPS did see a 5% increase going up to 196 FPS. This could be noticeable, but probably won't. And honestly, at this point, this extra RAM is more just for doing other things in the background, like having music open or streaming. Our maximum FPS was 224, nearly identical to the 16 gig run, 
although our minimum saw a massive uplift of 75%, going up to 168 FPS. Our 1% and 0.1% lows were at 75 and 15 FPS respectively, making this the smoothest gameplay that we tested thus far. I honestly didn't really notice those 0.1% lows being as low as they were, because the 1% lows were pretty high, well above that 60 FPS threshold that makes the gameplay feel very smooth and buttery. So to recap real quick, the jump from 4 to 8 was pretty massive, the jump from 8 to 16 was equally so, the jump from 16 to 32 was less so, but we did see a big uplift in stability with a much smoother gaming experience. I was honestly pretty happy with those 4 and 8 gig configurations for delivering the performance that they did. I thought they would be significantly lower, we're talking sub 60, sub 30 FPS on average. However, you do probably want to upgrade to 16 if you're trying to do anything more than just playing the game and if you want some more stability. So far this has shown us that even with a weaker CPU and GPU, having more RAM can kind of mask that. It can definitely help make up for a little bit of that lack of power that you're seeing in a system like this with some lower end hardware. And more RAM so far has clearly made a pretty big difference. But what about in a game that's a little bit more demanding? Well, let's take a look at Forza Horizon 5. Now, the OG viewers know that I specifically tested Forza Horizon 5 with different RAM configurations in a previous video. However, there was a big difference between this test and the test that I did then. The test that I did then involved much more powerful hardware. We had an i5-12600K along with a RTX 3070, which hugely outranks this hardware combo. So I am kind of interested to see what the differences will look like between this and that. If you want to see those results, then go check out that video. I'll have it linked in the card at the end of this video. So onto the testing. Before we even started FH5, like I'm talking right as I was trying to launch it, we got a warning telling us that we did not meet the minimum system memory requirements. We also got another warning saying, hey, you don't have the current drivers, and we decided not to upgrade those because at this point, we had already tested one game and we wanted it to remain fair. Anyways, at 1080p low, the PC looks like it performs well until you look at the display. We got an average of 82 FPS, which was a lot higher than I would have thought with this hardware combo. We peaked out at 128 and bottom out at 24 FPS, which is a pretty wide range, which isn't exactly what you want for smooth gameplay. That's compounded by our 1 and 0.1% lows being at 15 and 7 FPS each, making this game pretty stuttery. And if you didn't notice already, my monitor is acting like a strobe light because of this combo. Now, usually I wouldn't blame the monitor acting like that on this combo, but that disappeared immediately with our 8GB upgrade. Speaking of, here's what we got with said upgrade. We averaged 92 FPS, a solid 12% increase over our last score, maxing out at 148 and bottoming out at 2 because of a big stutter. Our 1% and 0.1% lows were at 2 and 1 FPS each, and yeah, this was a little bit more stuttery than the last gameplay, but it didn't look like it because thankfully, the strobe light effect had been turned off. With 16 gigs, we saw a 5 FPS gain moving up to 97 FPS. That's also about a 5% gain on our FPS here. The max that we hit was 153, and the min that we hit was 62 with our 1 and 0.1% lows being at 68 and 3 FPS, meaning this was still a little bit stuttery, although it was mostly playable. I didn't really notice any massive stutters, it just seemed to hitch here and there for a split second. So that's probably what that 0.1% low was. Overall, it was a ton more playable than the 8 gig setup was, and honestly, I would be perfectly happy with this configuration. That being said, cranking the dial up to 32 gigs kept most of our averages the same, however our 1 and 0.1% lows were much higher. We averaged at 102 FPS, which is another roughly 5% increase, with our max being at 136 and our min being at 76. The 1 and 0.1% lows, as I said, improved significantly, being at 74 and 66 FPS each. Now this was a much more playable experience than with the 16 gigs, and it did feel a lot smoother. There wasn't any of that little hitching here and there that caused our 0.1% lows to be where they were. It is weird to me that we got a much smaller change in performance with Forza versus Fortnite, and it kind of tells me that we have given our CPU and our GPU all the room that it needs to stretch its legs. And just to confirm that, we're going to try the most demanding title that I've got access to right now, which is Starfield. So with Starfield, I was curious to see if it would even run with 4 gigabytes of RAM, and so I tried launching it, and it got surprisingly far. It definitely launched Starfield, although it did feel pretty slow and like it didn't want to do much of anything. We got into the game, we even got into the menus, and we got to the point where we clicked Start Game. And after five or so minutes of loading, it decided it was going to crash. So Starfield's not going to run on four gigs, although I guess I wasn't really expecting too much more. With eight gigs of RAM on Starfield, we faced a pretty unplayable, pretty stuttery, and not very good looking mess. 
We averaged 28 FPS, maxing out at 32 and bottoming out at 20. Our 1% and 0.1% lows were at 17 and 12 FPS, although it felt much worse than that, and I was surprised to see that they are where they are. 16 gigs fared better, but really not by too much. We averaged 31 FPS, topped out at 35, and bottomed out at 28. Our 1% and 0.1% lows were at 26 and 24 FPS each. This made the gameplay feel a lot more playable than our 8 gig test, although it was still pretty ugly and I wouldn't want to play the game on this computer, although driver updates might help fix that, along with if you were to overclock the card or overclock the CPU, who knows. What was really weird to me though was that 32 gigs seemed to slow the PC down in almost every aspect. Our average FPS saw a 4% decrease going from 31 to 30 FPS. Now granted, this is probably within the margin of error given that it is only one FPS. However, our other stats seem to tell the same story. We maxed out at 33 and bottomed out at 28. These are the same or lower as our 16 gig test and our 1% and 0.1% lows were pretty similar, with 25 and 20 FPS being the result that we got. That really isn't all that great, and it doesn't inspire confidence in this whatsoever. At some point, your PC stops relying on RAM and just doesn't have the raw horsepower to keep up with the game. And at this point, I don't think the CPU and GPU are really made to go play Starfield. I mean, this game wasn't even out when these came out, so yeah, no duh, but I'm surprised that they even ran it at all. So. Thus far, we've learned that, well, it's probably good to have more RAM. If you're playing Starfield, you really don't want 32 gigs because then it becomes the bottleneck somehow. Anyways, overall, we know that more RAM is better. If you've got the money, 16 to 32 seems to be the sweet spot. If you're stuck on eight gigs, I probably wouldn't want to be there personally and would make that the first thing that I'd upgrade if you can, although most games are still pretty playable. With four gigs, good luck. I wouldn't put myself in that situation if I could avoid it. Now, with all the switching RAM around, I was curious to see what happens if you were to pull RAM out of the PC. So, to the test bench. Well, welcome to the back, I mean the test bench. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull the RAM out of this system that's running. This system is pretty low end and I wouldn't recommend doing this with your system. Although if you wanna mess around with it and you have a lower end system that you don't care about, feel free to do whatever. This is a fresh copy of Windows that doesn't have anything else on it. It doesn't even have drivers because this refuses to connect to the internet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up Task Manager here. And this is gonna let us see what exactly is going on in the computer while we're pulling the RAM out. Pulling the RAM out in three, Two, one. It did not like that, it immediately crashed. Let's turn the power supply off and see what happens. RAM is put back in, let's see what happens. No real damage yet. I mean, it looks like it booted straight back into Windows. All right, well, we're straight back into Windows with no real issues. Let's try the other stick and then we'll try putting it back in and see if it does anything. Pulling the other stick of RAM out in three, two, one. Yeah, it still didn't like that. What if we tried putting it back in? Huh. It just took it. Interesting. Literally the second we popped that back in, this tried starting up again. So I'm, I'm curious, I'm confused. Well, because we have made it this far, I am actually curious to see what happens if you pull the hard drive out while it's running, to see if it'll still run Windows while we're there. So we'll try that in a second as well. All right, well, now we are in Windows. Task Manager is back up and running. Why don't we pull the hard drive out and see what happens? We're still running. Huh. Whoa, that's kind of funny. That's weird. Oh, still got our mouse. Oh, Windows is dead. Well, that was quite an interesting video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have, then please feel free to leave a like and uh, comment what you guys want to see next down below. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Ryan. I will catch you next time. Ryan, out. Call me Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> we love that man. Right. Goodness, what are they doing in Fortnite? <laughs> this has been Reagan Ann McDonald's reporting to you live from PC Customs Office. Don't let the sweeper hit you on the way out. And don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you.